Welcome back to Strategies to Attract Sellers. Let's get some listings, folks. Starts with your database. And my definition of database is somebody who actually knows who you are. When you pick up the phone, send a text or email, they know your name. So this is your sphere of influence. Some people call it the center of influence. It's clearly your past clients. It could be people that you just met at an open house and you're working on, uh, for example, working on developing and nurturing that relationship. So we're gonna start with your database because this is ultimately the best source of repeat and referral business. And to actually get those that haven't worked with you yet to work with you. So you need to follow your database system in your client appreciation program, which we've talked about in a previous module. And we're gonna revisit that again in module 11 and take it up a notch. Some of the key things in talking and working with your database is to make sure your, my recommendation, quarterly calls or connections to, so that you can stay on top of mind with folks to discover who's considering selling or downsizing or right sizing or moving closer to a family or you may not be aware of things that are happening in people's lives and maybe they bought the house two years ago but they're ready to sell it. The only way you know that is by following a great system where you stay in touch with things like the newsletter that we've talked about and these quarterly touches. Calling people for good reasons, to have great conversations and to check in and to not just be the annoying realtor saying, hey, who do you know that needs to buy or sell real estate? Now, I do want you to ask that question. I'm just saying when you make phone calls, call for a reason. Call because you are wanting to wish them a happy birthday, for example, or you're saying happy anniversary. You've been in your home for five years now. I sent you a you know annual market analysis. Uh, just call because it's a holiday. You get the idea. Uh, be aware of milestones and events that are happening with the people in your database. If you follow them on social media, people post things that are happening. Great opportunity for you to reach out and check in with them and see what's going on. And then, of course, you're always going to have that call to action about you're never too busy for anybody's referral and to remind people to think of you when they think of real estate. So your database, number one source. Next out of state or absentee owners. So I'm gonna really walk through a bunch of ideas here, and then we're gonna talk about expires and FISBOs for sell by owners in their own little lessons. And we even have more coming in later modules because there's just so many ideas of things that you can do to generate leads for sellers. Now I like out of state absentee owners because it is a great farming idea. It's a way to just locate people who do not live in the city, state, province, and they're living elsewhere, so this is an investment home or a second home for them. Now, you need to access that, either going to a third-party resource that you may have access to, but you can also just jump into your own MLS. There usually is something like Remind or Realist or whatever tool that you have to simply look for people who, do, who have a mailing address that's different than the address of the property. That's how you're going to find that. So what do you do? You get this list. You're generally just going to have their mailing address, so send a letter introducing yourself, uh, talking about what it is, your qualifications, and why you would like to be their realtor of choice when the time is right to sell. And if they've been thinking of selling, you can include things like suggesting a 1031 ex exchange, perhaps, or maybe providing information on 1031s in case they don't know about that. Uh, you may suggest that the tenant might want to purchase the property or another investor might want to buy. Like it's a great time to sell your home right now because of the market and you insert the information. So the messaging changes based on what's happening in the market. You may include a sample market analysis showing the market increase, you know, in the last couple years. You could even hand address this envelope. It might have a better open rate. And then the other things that you can do is you can check for other sources of, for contact information. There is all types of data companies out there that you can purchase by uploading a list and have them cross-reference to find emails and phone numbers. They're not 100% accurate, but I find them to be 70 to 80%. You'll get some contact information, so you can either send an email, you can call or text, and follow up and start a system like that. Okay, so be sure you add these this list if you're going to do this on a, not just a one off type thing. If you're going to farm an area and you're farming all the absentee owners, make sure you add them to your CRM and stay in touch with them. Do quarterly mailers, for example. Now, one idea that I would really recommend that is another way if you can't get the, de the data that you didn't purchase the data, for example, to get emails and phone numbers is to include in your mailers, your postcards, your initial introductory letter, 
some type of call to action that will drive them to your website if you have a home valuation tool where you can send them a market report that's based on your IDX real estate site or some third party site that you're using and that's what you would put in there what you know get a monthly updated report email to you on the value of your home and what's happening in your neighborhood just go to this link okay and get a good URL not a long URL go buy a URL from a domain service that might say you know your city home values .com. all right easy to remember people can go they can sign up it goes to your landing page and there you have it that's the absentee owner idea. The next one works specifically well, any, any market really, but when you have a really hot seller's market and there's not enough inventory, try the a, I may have a buyer for your property letter. And this is to try to find off market properties. So by the way, only do this when you really do have a buyer. Okay, nothing worse than uh, bait and switch, okay? Don't wanna be going down that road. You want to truly have a buyer who's looking for a home and you can't find it in the MLS. So you construct a letter that might have some details about your buyers. Remember, always follow fair housing guidelines when you're writing any kind of thing and, and speaking about people in general. Um, but you have a buyer that is really interested in your neighborhood for whatever reasons are. What is their motivation? We can't find the property on the market. Have you considered selling yours? It's a great time to sell. Here's why. And that, so now you mail it. You mail it to all the area, uh, all the houses that match the criteria. You just do a search using the tax records again, not the MLS, because it's not listed. Uh, another cool idea that I've seen in the past is you could put get a little colorful sticky note with your name and number on it. You can insert your business card, but they may grab that sticky note, put it somewhere to remember to call you, okay? So that little colorful sticky note with your name and phone number on it uh, is a great idea, all right? And then you, uh, we've given you a copy of, in your downloads, uh, a script and, and a letter, you know, that just starts with, I'm currently representing a wonderful family or a couple, future homeowner who desperately wants to and insert the motivation. So we've given you the starts of a great letter uh, to help you with that. Okay, so use that. That is a great way to get um, to, to, to try to find some off-market properties. And if the buyer that you have, it doesn't match the particular house that somebody actually calls you on, you have an opportunity for a listing appointment. All right, let's talk a little bit about specialties and designations. More on this topic uh, really in detail in Module 8 and 11. We're really going to get into niche marketing and we're going to talk more about this. But just to get you thinking now, I really do believe in uh, getting additional training through designation courses, through the various association of realtors, to different specialties. And they can be everything from probate, divorce specialty, those are very specific specialties, uh, distressed properties, to demographic specialties, like working with types of people like military, seniors, first time home buyers, to a type of property that you could specialize in condos, high rises, golf course communities, etc. And if you really are going to work on that, then I would, um, you know, hang tight, tons of detail coming on strategies, more details of all the types of spe specialties that are out there, and then ideas around how to market and lead generate. Um, but, the, but the idea here would be to start thinking about, is there something that you really like, that you're passionate about around a type of property, a type of person or a demographic. It could be a geographic area. It could be a skill set that you have that you had in your previous career to real estate that you want to parlay into a specialty. Specialty Specialization, I think, is key in the business. It's a way for you to separate yourself from everyone else and not just be a generalist. Now, you don't have to also pigeonhole yourself and say, well, I only work with military buyers and sellers. But if you have that background, you have instant rapport, uh, then you, it's going to be a great specialty. doesn't mean that you don't help someone who's not a veteran. You, you with me? Yes, I think you're with me. All right, cool. So specialization, think about doctors, attorneys. They specialize because there is, there is, it's more lucrative to be a specialist and to be that expert than to try to be a generalist, in my opinion. All right, online lead generation. There are a variety of ways to generate leads uh, that either you pay for or you do yourself through social media and other online portals. We're going to cover that in detail in Module 10, including things like the listing portal Zillow, Realtor.com specifically, the social media platforms from organic ideas to how you can pay for advertising to paid lead sources, third party. There are third party 
uh, sources out there and they change from time to time but a couple examples as we record this would be the Red X boldleads.com and then there's always predictive analytic companies there's a lot of companies that are out there that are data companies now pulling all the data in to, trying to use the data as a source to predict when somebody might think of selling their home some popular ones include prospect now offers and smart zip you need to do a, a research in your area to find what because they don't cover all cities all provinces some are united states some may be for the, the Canada market only, so do some research. They're out there, trust me. And I mentioned distressed properties. I do want to take a second to talk about distressed properties. Uh, this, this is, there's always a small percentage of people who get behind in their home, and depending on the market that you're in, they could tick up. Uh, they're generally a small percentage of the overall closings, but it is a unique specialty nonetheless that you can start working with short sales or even start developing relationships with banks to pick up their foreclosed properties, the REOs, okay? So if you're gonna get into distressed properties, then you have to have an entire system around getting the, when the property goes into a default status, it's called different things in different places, but a notice of default, you need a pre-foreclosure system. You, it's public information, so you can get the list of people who are behind, and then you need to put together a system to stay in touch with these folks and even knock on the door, send a letter, and remember, people that are very stressed out in this situation when they're behind in their payment and they don't necessarily want to, you know, you have to be persistent is what I'm saying because anybody knocking on the door they generally think is you know the bank or the mortgage company or somebody coming after them because they're behind in their payments so go go develop the system that you're going to work for that and then you're going to have to follow a daily or weekly system just like everything that we talk about here in the real estate sales builder program if you choose a strategy you must develop a system around it and then you have to consistently work it on a daily and weekly basis. There's no other easy way. I wish there was an easy way to do the business, but frankly, if there was, nobody would be doing real estate because you wouldn't be able to make any money, all right? So you have got to find what works for you and then work the system, all right? So that it can include developing the letters. We've given you a couple letters that you can take, and remember, the best practices with these is that you get the list weekly, you do the research to see if it's the if it's an area that you specialize in and you want to work in. You can hand write the letter. You can mail it with a, a colorful stamp. Hand write the envelope, rather not so, so much the letter. Sign the letter, and then in, include information that about why they should consider working with you. My whole approach to distressed properties is to be a consultant and to do something like how to do a free consultation for them to avoid foreclosure. You wanna show them that there are other options. It could include a short sale. It may include things like a loan modification program. It could be other things that you could do to support them and that's part of what you're offering. Don't let your house go to foreclosure status. Call me and let me do a free consultation to go over what your options are. That's the approach that you take that needs to be in that letter that you send out and now you put together your strategies that you want to do to follow up with folks. And you try once, and if they do, uh, if you make a contact and they don't want to list right now, then see if you can get permission to stay in touch with them, all right? All right, the next major area is farming. And their farming is not just geographic. So in module eight, that is entirely dedicated to the topic of farming, where we'll go into detail on geo farming a little bit more on discovering niches and then we'll dive into that deeply in module 11. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about in module eight, um, the idea of a hometown farm or surname farm and building your own agent network, okay? So that is the beginnings of some strategies to attract sellers starting with your database. Join me uh, in the next lesson and we'll start picking up a couple of very specific ways to go after a segment of people that wanna sell their house.